Okay, guys, I'm super impatient. I'm just going to go ahead and start. Yay! Okay, first, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm super stoked. Um, I'm super excited. Yay! Okay, before I get started, um, I just want to let everyone know that there are going to be some polls popping up during the webinar, so be on the lookout for those. Um, also, at any time, you can type your questions in the sidebar for the live Q&A at the end. Um, for those that stay until the end, you are awesome and I love you. Um, I'll be giving out Photomint's new book, Photography Business Secrets, which is awesome. I've read through it. It's really, really good. And I'm also going to give out two contracts from Create Pro Legal Forms. Um, Rebecca Kogel totally rocks. She's an amazing lawyer. Check her out. Um, one of the contracts is going to be a portrait contract, and the other one is going to be a wedding contract. So, yay! So the webinar is also being recorded. And so in case anyone needs to, like, step out or if you have a friend that couldn't make it, or you know someone that like would really benefit from this webinar, um, I'm going to send you guys links after everything's done and you can spread the love. All right, with all of that said, my name is Elizabeth Atkins, yay! <laughs> and I run one of the best little brand and marketing design studios in the South called Post Film Design. I currently have a studio set up in a live work loft space here in the heart of Atlanta. So if it sounds a little echoey, you know why. <laughs> I've worked with companies such as Majestic um, Apparel, Harley Davidson Apparel, Photodo.com, DigitalWeddingForum.com, just to name a few. And I've also worked with a range of amazing, talented, creative people that have come to me looking to grow their business um, marketing skills or just their visual branding. Because I specialize in business marketing graphics and subsequent branding materials, and have work, worked with tons of companies, both big and small, um, I wanted to take some time out and clear up a lot of misconceptions of what brand design really is and help you guys understand how to develop a brand identity. If you're a small business, especially a photographer, this industry is super confusing with a ton of information floating around out there. Some of it is not true and some of it is. So it's really hard to distinguish between the two. And I wanted to help you guys make better business decisions that are informed and educated. And ultimately, my biggest goal today is to help you succeed at achieving whatever your goals may be. So whether you want to book more clients, you want to sell more products, or you just want to actually target an ideal client, following some of my tips can help you make better business decisions down the road. We're also going to talk about avoiding some common mistakes and pitfalls when it comes to using graphic designers or branding companies. My tips will help you make the most out of whatever marketing graphics or designs um, you're creating for your business. And at the end of the day, it will also help you invest your money wisely. And that's pretty much the ultimate goal here, investing wisely. The last thing anyone wants to do is invest time, money, energy into something that won't help them six months to a year down the road. Keep in mind, not all designs are created equal. Not all designers or brand studios understand good marketing practices. And most importantly, a great design won't guarantee more success. So let's start with the core foundation that will dictate your visual branding. So what exactly is branding okay this is super confusing everybody's like what the heck <laughs> branding is the direct graphic representation of the core values of your business and in a lot of ways brand identities represent the most important parts or aspects of your business so brand identity design can both repel and attract clients, depending on your goals that you set forth. What the heck does that actually mean? Okay. <laughs> People get super confused about that as well. They have no idea how to structure their brand identities to benefit them. And a lot of people get caught up in the visuals, hoping something beautiful will be the magic bullet that creates a better business for them. Before you design a business brand identity, you have to first craft your actual business. You have to address everything from how you will handle client emails to dealing with difficult clients because we all get them, every single business, to what your yearly income goal is going to be, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So ultimately, the backbone of your brand identity design is your business model. 
if you don't have a clearly defined business model, it's extremely difficult to differentiate yourself in a super saturated market. Not understanding your end goals or what purpose your business has will also lead you to choose graphics that may not be very effective. Or sometimes you might end up choosing graphics because they are trendy or they're pretty or they may just be visually appealing to you. Okay, so how many times have you thought to yourself, I'm totally bored with my logo, I hate everything on my website, I'm just going to change it all. Okay, yeah, um, I'm super guilty of that too. It's kind of a symptom of being a creative person in a creative industry. You don't beat yourself up about that. And we all know we're not supposed to do it, but no one ever really takes the time to explain the real reason why. So I'm actually gonna do that right now, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Making those last minute logo changes or changing graphics because you're tired of them, it's not an effective strategy. A change in your business appearance can dramatically affect how your audience perceives you. Not having a solid strategy makes it more difficult to make wise marketing goals, find your target market, and uh, well, actually target your ideal clients with those awesome designs. Creating a business model with a solid action plan of who and what your business is could help the constant stress or constant boredom related to your marketing and your visual brand. So basically, if you have something set out ahead of time and you know what you wanna do with it, you're less likely to change it down the road, if that makes sense. So, okay, let's back it up a little bit. For those of you that might be fuzzy on what a business model is and why the heck it relates to visual branding, I, I pulled a definition down from Wikipedia that might help you a little bit. Wikipedia defines a business model as such. Quote, a business model describes the rationale of how an organization creates, delivers, and captures value, bracket. That value could be economic, social, cultural, or other forms of value, end bracket. The process of business model construction is part of a business strategy, end quote. Okay. Good business models are part of a total business strategy that has clearly defined goals and are well-researched. They're part of an action plan that is flexible and well thought out. Okay, here's a really, really silly example. If you're in the business of selling more blueberry pies, right? So imagine you're a baker and you specialize in blueberry pies. When you're running your business, the first thing you want to do is be very aware of how many people in your area love blueberries. You also are aware of who your competition is, how you will deliver your blueberry pies, as in whether you have a storefront or you're dropping them off at people's houses. You also know how much each blueberry pie costs to make and what ways you will promote your pies as literally the best pies on the entire planet. But knowing where to start with all of that information and kind of researching that market can be extremely daunting, especially when you're not very familiar with how these things kind of operate. So here's a question. What would be your first step in creating a business model you could base designs off of? Okay, so this kind of just leads into the next to topic. So the next topic that answers that question is targeting your market. Targeting your market is a huge part of what makes up your brand and massively dictates your brand identity with actual, what you actually look like. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you can hear my dog barking. <laughs> okay, so anyways, um, your business model is super structured on how your target market is created, like who your target market is. So this is also where the most research comes into play and it's super confusing as well. So knowing your, who your customer is, how old they are, how often they're likely to become repeat clients, even their age, all of that could change the way you handle your business. If you're not sure who your clients are, think about your perfect ideal client. What kind of income do they bring in? What's their age bracket? Where do they live? More importantly, why do they need what you have? That is really the most important part. 
So I frequently hear small business owners tell me their target market is everyone or sometimes even worse, just women or just men. Broad categories aren't really target markets. A target market is kind of just that, a targeted group of people that will be most likely to purchase your service. Not everyone wants what you have. And quite honestly, you do not want to work with everyone, trust me. You only want to work with the people that suit your business goals and you the best. Every business is targeting their audience. Okay, so take for example, Walmart. You would think that their target market is everyone, but that is definitely not the case. Okay, so I'm sure you know several people who will never ever in their life be caught dead shopping in Walmart for either various personal or moral reasons. Just like I'm sure you know people who refuse to shop anywhere else. They think it's literally the best place on the planet to get deals. And who knows who is right. So if you take a moment to think about what types of products or services you personally enjoy and what drives you to make those purchasing decisions, it starts to become clear that there's a larger force at work here. A business that understands their clients and their needs is a business that is much more likely to develop marketing materials, logos, and graphics that appeal to their target clients. Having a better and more well-defined strategy will absolutely make your business easier to run, hands down. Being aware of who your audience is and creating a strategy to target them with clearly defined goals is the first step to developing solid brand identity visuals. Also keep in mind, branding is not about duking it out with the competition to get the client to select you over someone else. The ultimate goal of your branding is getting that potential client to see you as the only solution for whatever service they seek. But uh, how do you stand out in a saturated market? Okay, yeah, this is the most frequently asked question I get from clients looking to revamp their marketing strategies. I hear it constantly. There's too many people competing. There are not enough clients. Clients are nickel and diming me. They're not willing to pay for my services. I hear it all the time. Many people believe that having a beautiful blog or a gorgeous logo will help them stand out in the market. Okay, so beautiful graphics absolutely hands down help, but not following up the graphics with intent, with meaning and purpose will pretty much almost guarantee failure. The more saturated a market is, the more sophisticated and targeted a company's market marketing has to be. What a lot of people fail to realize is that the more saturated the market, the less likely your competition will have cohesive and smart business model that can sustain them over the years to come. So if you're smart, you can outsmart your competition that way. And let's keep this also in mind, oversaturation is not a symptom of just your industry. It can be found in nearly every industry from designers like myself, to lawyers, to doctors, to photographers, to cupcake makers. The options are literally endless out there. In a saturated with market with skeptical clients with many, many, many choices, Having a cohesive, targeted plan is king. And following it up with wonderful, connective, meaningful graphics can set you eons apart from your competitors. Having a direct message that welcomes your ideal client and discourages any unlikely candidate is truly your ultimate goal. In a saturated market with skeptical clients, what's more important? So what's more important is connecting with your target audience on an emotional level and expressing to them that you are the perfect choice for them. Being genuine and appealing to your ideal client should be the end goal of any marketing design you do, including goals or logos, uh, business cards, uh, marketing campaigns, you name it, hands down, all of that stuff. So, okay, take, for example, this is one of my branding clients, Katie Gray. 
this is her logo um, before rebranding with me. Okay, so this logo is beautiful. It's really well designed. The font is super cute. It's very unique. I actually really love this logo. But let's think for a minute about Katie's ideal client. Katie Gray's target audience is a fun, hipster chic, nerdy, lovable, quirky, unexpected. They're the kind, kind of people that wear like bow ties and suspenders to their weddings. Their incomes kind of vary around all over the map, but what doesn't vary is their love of all things unique and totally tongue in cheek. Katie only wanted to attract clients that wanted to work with her. And Katie describes herself as a fun, stress-free, funny photographer that wasn't stuffy or overly fussy. Katie wanted her clients to know that she would be the best and most fun choice and only wanted clients that wanted to laugh with her. Katie cared less about how big or small or lavish the wedding was and cared only more about that her clients understood her, they valued her, and they were really, really excited to work with her. Taking that all into consideration, plus a ton more research into her business model and marketing and, and competitive nature and her market in Jackson Hole, which is where she's located. She's in Wyoming. This is the brand I ended up developing for Katie Gray. Knowing your business model, target audience, and subsequently your marketing message will help you deliver effective, focused, and gorgeous graphics that will wow your potential clients and motivate them to contact you, not because they're price shopping or because they're looking for a bargain basement deal. They're contacting you because they feel like you get them. They connect with you without even talking to you. And they know you can provide them a level of service that they won't get anywhere else but from you. And ultimately, isn't that exactly what every business is striving for? So before you jump into design, here's my suggestion. Bust out a huge piece of paper, like a really, really big one, or a really, really big Word document, <laughs> wherever you jot down your thoughts. Start making a bigger and better future plan for your business. I want you guys to back it up with research. Take a look at your website analytics. Talk to your past clients, and I really want you to check out your competition in your market and look at what they're doing. Arm yourself with as much knowledge as you possibly can about your market, and I guarantee you guys will be really super surprised at the results. Before I open up the discussion to like big live Q&A, and I'm sure you guys have tons and tons of questions, um, I want to throw out some tips and tricks on how and when to work with a graphic designer, because I think there's a lot of misconception about that as well. Um, as I previously stated, not all designers or designs are created equal, and that not all branding companies keep designing for marketing in mind. So definitely, let's talk about that a little bit more. The graphic design and visual community is flooded with a range of different services, just like literally any other creative market out there. Everyone has a varying level of knowledge and everyone works a little differently. Oops, sorry guys. That was my bad. <laughs> for those looking to rebrand, create graphics for marketing campaigns or create a logo. It's incredibly important to have an understanding of how the artists you're hiring operates, including what they base their design work off of. So definitely don't go off grilling anybody about like their blood type or their dental history, nothing like that. But just be aware of what that designer's background is and their preferred method of constructing their design work. So it's most important to define, like find a designer that will work best and be suited best to you. A very large portion of designers have less experience in traditional business and marketing and have more artistic backgrounds. And that is completely awesome for someone that might already know all about their business model. And it's really, really great for someone that might already know what their design might look like, or, or maybe even already has like a purpose lined up for their marketing efforts. But unfortunately, if you're like most small business owners, this option might not be the best for you. So if you're like most business owners, I know it's, 
extremely difficult to be an expert in literally everything associated with your business. If you're looking for marketing design help and want better branding visuals, a double, triple check that the designer you're hiring is right for you. Also, be hyper aware that a lot of your competition might not know the pitfalls like you do, but might be having exactly the same thoughts you are right now. And on top of it, your competition is paying oodles of money for pretty graphics that might not hold much meaning. They're downloading all the same templates you've looked at or maybe even used yourself in the past. They have all the same blog site designs. They're using all the same action companies you are, and they rarely have end goals in mind. Okay, so I just hit on something that's really important and might get everyone kind of thinking. So templates, templates, are they bad? Okay, not at all. Actually, they're perfect if you know exactly when and why you're using a template. Templates should only be used with an understanding that your competition has access to them. And on top of it, your competition may be using the exact same marketing materials you are, right in the same market, right down the street. Templates are great in most cases, but just proceed with caution and use only when applicable. If you strongly believe that the visual brand of your business holds value in the marketplace, and trust me, it really, really does, definitely consider custom brand design work as part of your marketing budget for the year. The great part about visual branding is that you only have to invest in it once if you do it right, and it will more than pay for itself in sales over the years to come. If it's done right, brand design is meant to be flexible and last a very long time. Investing in great brand identity work is also investing back into your business. If you're ready to rebrand, remember, decide what kind of designer is going to be best for you a traditional graphic designer, or a marketing and business brand designer. There's definitely a big difference. Be diligent in your research. Craft a very well thought out plan before deciding on any final design that you do. It's not as common to work with a designer that's also experienced with business structure and marketing, but if you feel a marketing and business oriented type of designer is right for you, Pay very close attention to all of the questions they will be asking and be prepared to reach deep into your business model. And honestly, never be afraid to speak up when you don't understand what the heck is going on. And that's okay. They expect that from you. <laughs> also, before you book a marketing and business oriented type of designer, ask about what strategies they recommend to launch your brand. 90% of my clients come to me looking for business overhauls and are kind of in a desperate need of help with their target markets. A lot of them are confused and not quite sure how to book the clients that they really, really want and even what branding might mean to them in their business. A great marketing and visual brand designer will sit with you and help craft a better message based on factual data, market competition, and client feedback. They'll create launch plans with you and help ensure your future success. It's less about trends, more about goals and achievement. After your brand design, the rest honestly is really up to you. Be diligent with your business model. Check the health of your marketing goals. Always be strategizing a bigger and better way to reach your clients that you want to book. Okay. <laughs> That was a super whole bunch of lots of information. Yay! I hope all of you have enjoyed listening to me talk about a topic I'm extremely passionate about. I absolutely love what I do. I'm super, super thrilled you all could join me tonight. And I really hope that I've been able to help some of you. Teaching and being a resource is truly a great honor. It super, super is. And I, I hope whatever I've said, you're able to put to good use, pass it on to other people, make other people's lives easier and better. So with that said, let's go to the Q&A. And then afterwards from the Q&A, I am going to give away a couple of those goodies for the people that stick around. Hmm. All right. So um, I actually had a, um, a question emailed in to me that I thought was really interesting and very, very important to answer. So I'm going to go ahead and answer that before I dig into um, some of the questions you guys have put in this little typey window. 
So one of the questions I got via email is, is lowering your price a good approach for marketing slash way of getting more business? Um, I'm gonna assume, I, and actually I know this person is a photographer. Um, so let me just answer that right now. I'm gonna say no, because there's always gonna be someone cheaper <laughs> or free. I mean, how many times have you guys seen Craigslist ads for photographers for like a hundred bucks or free or whatever? I mean, you can't compete with free. I mean, you can't get any cheaper than free either. So uh, I'm going to say you honestly can't compete on price alone. You really, really can't. And you can't compete with just absolutely everyone. You have to compete on uh, experience. So another part of this is you can't work yourself to death either. So if you're working for lower than you know you can like pay your light bill for, it's not a very good way to run your business. Um, here is, though, a really, really good way to kind of restructure that thought pattern. I'm a huge fan of marketing for a purpose and making up reasons to celebrate why you're super, super awesome. So instead of discounting your total services, why don't you throw like a huge party and make like a big hubbub about how awesome you are? So instead of calling it like, I don't know, a mini session, why don't you call it a marathon or something equally different and funky, something that reflects that you're like excited to do business and you want to get out there and kick a bunch of butt instead of just discounting your total services. So um, let me see. I'm going to open it up and see what other questions we have. What are some steps you would recommend for helping to define your target market? I know who I like to work with, but it feels a bit hard to define. Okay, defining your target market. So part of it is sort of personal, and another part of it is analytical. Sometimes it's not an emotional connection when you're doing market research. So say you live in Blueberry Pie Town. <laughs> Again, Blueberry Pie, sorry guys. So there is a population of a thousand people in Blueberry Pie Town. So the first step you would say is, okay, there are a thousand people. How many, so if you're a photographer, let's just assume you're a photographer, how many of those people are getting married? So figuring out from there of a thousand people, maybe five get married a year. Then you have to look at your, your competition in your market. How many people are competing against me for those five weddings? And after you do all that, the unemotional analytical part of it, you kind of have to ask yourself the question, what kind of business do I want to run? And am I running a business that is valuable to the people that I'm marketing to? So say if you're living in Blueberry Pie Town and you're a photographer and you want to shoot weddings, what's going to differentiate you and also satisfy your creative need in that market? And if you're being creative, is it accessible enough for your community? Are they going to buy into that? So a lot of people target brides in between the age bracket of, say, 25 to 35. And they're usually targeting, targeting like mid-level brides that are, they spend roughly like $30,000 on their weddings. What if you looked at that and said, I want to target something completely different? What if you only targeted tattooed brides? Mike Alabak is actually a really good example of defining extremely targeted market. He decided that he only wanted to target brides that had tattoos. And this guy is literally making a killing at what he does. He's writing books. He's attending seminars. He's now going to be speaking at WPPI next year. It's very, very interesting to watch him. He has almost, I think, 20,000 fans on Facebook. Talk about targeting a market that no one else is really doing. Let's see what other questions we have. Hopefully that, that answered that question. <laughs> okay, very early in development of my business model. Welcome, welcome, yay, we love early developers. Um, and my business in general, at what point do you recommend bringing in brand identity help? Okay. I honestly think brand identity help and spending money on brand identity 
basically means that you've done the footwork to understand how to operate your business. So if you've put in, put in the time to be a second shooter, again, I know uh, this is Kelly. I know she's a photographer. So if you've taken time to put in being a second shooter, you've worked with, you know, or maybe mentored with another um, photography business and you understand the structure of how they work, um, you've clearly defined like how you want to operate with your clients, how you're going to handle clients. You've also taken the steps to become legal. And more importantly, you've paid off enough of your debt to actually take the amount of money that you need to invest in branding. I honestly think that would be the time to seek someone that will help you develop your visuals further. It's kind of difficult because everybody wants to brand right out the gate. They want to start their business and be full fledged, like from day one. But if we're going to be realistic, that that doesn't really happen that often, unless that person has had previous experience running some other business. So I would definitely give yourself a little bit of time to make mistakes and not confuse your audience, because the worst thing you can do is get out there and go gung ho and get really, really excited about it and then make a ton of mistakes and fall flat on your face and feel like you fail and then feel ultimately crap. Now I have to rebrand. Okay, next question. This one's a great one. Stacy asked, what is the way to show excitement through advertising and marketing? Okay, so it, um, this is kind of like a multi-level question because it, I, I guess it would depend on which avenue you feel is most important and also who your target client is. So I'm just going to pretend that you shoot seniors. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what do, where do seniors spend most of their time and what do they get most excited about? So if you're targeting like a senior market, um, shooting, like creating a large party atmosphere and doing something really unique that your competitors may not be doing yet might be a great way to, to reach that target client. I think ultimately in order to create really exciting advertisement and marketing, you have to be hyper aware of what's going on around you and also know that the majority of people are marketing on the internet and that's a very loud place to be. Um, so taking a look at what everybody else is doing and kind of going not necessarily against the grain, but doing it better. That's a great way to kind of generate excitement. And sometimes you have to take it off the internet too. Don't be afraid to create something where people have to show up or something that people have to commit to. Um, think about ways to be unique that will benefit your target audience. What if you, if you want to make something exciting, think about who your client is and what they want. Like, what are they, what do they need? Can you somehow fulfill a need for them? Is there a way that you may be able to help them with your services? Sometimes it's, it's not so much like being exciting, but sometimes also deeply caring about your clients that gets your clients excited about your marketing. Think about it that way too. Let's see, next question. Okay, this one is also a great question because it's kind of all over the map too, but um, Mackenzie asks, how much is an investment in branding? Um, I honestly think branding, like any brand or business model is kind of like, it's an ever evolving and ever growing sort of thing. So you definitely have to be aware that it's going to be moving forward with you as you move forward. So Investing in branding might be more of a long haul than just a short upfront branding. And it, I mean, honestly, if you're talking more about visuals and graphics too, it, it varies all over the map. It can be literally like 500 bucks from a new person to 4,500 bucks to an extremely well sought after uh, brand identity company. And it could be anywhere in between. So, I mean, I think to be realistic, definitely plan to, if you're doing visual graphics, plan ahead of time to save a chunk of money that would probably be comparable if you're a photographer to your services or how much you charge, and then kind of apply in general knowledge that to a brand designer. Because I mean, we, 
brand designers and graphic designers and photographers, they kind of have that similarity as far as investment. They're not very different on that kind of front. So it kind of ranges all over the map. So hopefully that answers your question a little bit more. Oh, here's a good one. Ashley McCormick, she asked, do you have any great Facebook marketing tips? Yes, actually. And it's not about Facebook. You're probably going to hate me. <laughs> My Facebook marketing tip is any possible time you can direct your marketing off of Facebook. Okay, people are going to be like, what? That's crazy. But all my clients are on Facebook. Yes, yes, they are. They totally, totally are. But keep in mind that Facebook is its own entity. Facebook doesn't really necessarily care about you. Facebook isn't going to boost your rankings on your website. And Facebook, if they want to, they can shut you down in literally five seconds. So if you spend like I don't know, a year building up 6,000 fans on your Facebook. And every time you post a thousand people see what you post, but if for some reason you violate Facebook TOS and it could be literally anything, those people could be gone in an instant. So definitely keep that in mind. But to actually answer your question about great Facebook marketing tips, because I know you're like, what? that's not what I wanted. <laughs> um, Facebook marketing tips. Okay. So, I think don't be overly concerned with how many fans you have on Facebook. Be more concerned if you're reaching your target audience or not. So if you want to communicate effectively with your fans on Facebook, make sure that you're providing interesting content for them and also engage them. Give them opportunities to talk back to you. Talk back to you in, in a positive way, obviously. <laughs> but give them reasons to enjoy what they're doing. So yeah, I mean, give them reasons to comment on your posts. Even if you're just saying something silly, like I, I baked a turkey and I totally like, I don't know, burnt it or whatever. I mean, people enjoy engaging, so give them reasons to engage. Hopefully that answers your question. I'm sorry, I told you not to use Facebook in, a, in kind of a roundabout way. <laughs> okay, the next question, let's see. Oh, this is a great one. Ginger asks, can you talk a little bit about naming your business and really thinking about the name? So many people give their photography cutesy names and then need to switch things up and rename and rebrand later. Oh my God, this is such an interesting topic to me. Okay, so I actually went through uh, a name process myself. And I post film I chose because it was important to me. And at the time I, I got kind of caught up in like service marking it and making sure nobody else could have it. Cause that was really, really important to what the work that I do. Naming your business is so, so important. I mean, a lot of people from a legal standpoint choose their name automatically because it's, legally there. So if you name your business Elizabeth Atkins Photography or Elizabeth Atkins Design, you you don't have to worry necessarily about people stealing that name because it's your name and you don't have to worry about the legalities, legalities of it unless somehow there's another Elizabeth Atkins Design in my market, which is going to be very unlikely. But anyways, naming your business something that is cutesy or gives you kind of like a position where you have to rebrand later is really, really difficult to deal with. It's tough because anytime you rename your business, you go directly back to page one. It's like everything you do is down to ground zero again. It sucks. You lose like everyone. It's totally lame. So choosing a business name, this kind of goes in back to what I was saying about creating a target market and also creating a really solid business model with extremely solid business strategy. And I, I think what the problem is in this, in most industries is that people don't actually take the time to do that. So they end up with like boogery names, like blueberry pies, galore, photography.com.net or whatever. <laughs> and then they end up going two years later when they actually develop their business enough to go, holy crap, photography, boogers, blueberry.net.com is not targeting my market and everyone is super, super confused and, I, and no one's booking me. Then they realize, oh crap, my business name is actually really, really important. So 
yeah, naming your business, totally kind of a pet peeve of mine and it's not easy. So, all right, let's look at the next question. I can't believe you guys are asking so many questions. This is amazing. Okay, this is great. Lee asks, what's the difference between getting a new logo and website and quote branding? Okay, let me think about this for a minute. What's the difference between getting a new logo? Oh, okay, so you're asking about the difference between branding and the difference between a new website and logo. Okay, so hopefully I kind of like answered that a little bit during my speech. Um, branding itself is, is more of an involved process. It's kind of, it's developing visuals that uphold every part of your marketing strategy. So um, your logo is a great start. Your logo is how you define yourself from other competitors. Um, branding is more about, well, visual branding is more about creating a cohesive look from everything from email signatures to um, package design to client interaction and your, your thank yous or giveaways. I mean, like your final client packages to, again, your logo, your website, any subsequent materials, any Facebook marketing you might be doing. Um, your total brand is going to dictate and give you guidelines and priorities on how you're going to handle all of the visuals of your, your, um, your business. The great part about a brand is that it, it gives you a guideline and it gives you structure and it gives you boundaries. Just having a website and logo is totally fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But if you're going to have just a website and logo, you might run into the issue of being like, holy crap, um, now what do I do for packaging? Or holy crap, how do I design this album? Do I put my logo here? What do I do? Or holy crap, my client wants a thank you gift bag and I don't even know what it's going to look like. And I have no idea. Are, are my colors going to be the color? Like, are they going to print right? Like, oh, so but that's, that's a big, big contrast and difference. So, oh, and also a logo and a website, they could be really, really well researched, but if you're going to put all that time and effort into a really, really well researched logo and website, you might as well just finish the whole shebang and get colors and patterns and make sure you're doing it right from the get go. And next question. Ooh, this one's good too. Stacy, you have such good questions. How often do you recommend posting on Facebook, blogs, etc.? Is posting simple tidbits and things that are normal to life to get to know you like things the best to do or keep it more business? Okay, this is a great question. So as far I actually handle social media for two large dot coms right now, and I do all of their marketing um, and I, I handle most of their web presence. Um, so for one of the dot coms I, I do work for, they are a um, they're a product based website. It's photodo.com. There's it's not a secret. It's photodo.com. So if you take a look at photodo.com's Facebook page, yeah, I'm the one that's updating it, but it's literally like we can't post enough because we're trying to drive sales, if that makes sense. So we want people to constantly be updated, constantly, 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 because we want people to be excited and purchase some of the products. So based on our business model, because we're selling products, it's really, really important for us to constantly update. Literally, we, we update posts two to three times, the same exact posts two to three times a day. For a photography business, that might not be the best way to go about posting on Facebook. Um, you also have to experiment on your time of day as to when you'll get the most attention. So I would sit down and kind of create a little bit of a schedule and see what gets the best feedback. So if your business is really formal and maybe you shoot only Indian weddings and they expect a certain amount of something to come from you that's more higher level or more luxury based, it's not very likely that you're going to post on Facebook that you like busted your toe skateboarding in like, you know, a skate park down the street. However, if your brand is more like Katie Gray's or if you're more like super, super fun and really funky, posting something personal is actually going to get you more likes because your audience is going to understand you better and they're going to love it and they're going to relate to you. How often you post, I don't, it, again, it depends on what your brand is and what you're trying to sell and what you're hoping to do, what you're hoping to accomplish. Um, same with blogs. 
the it's a little bit different with blogs because content is king but also remember context is god so if you're posting a ton a ton a ton on your blogs you have to remember that the context of what you're posting should be valuable and hopefully that answers that question um we have about 10 minutes left in our time so i am going to answer a couple more questions and then i'm going to give away some stuff to y'all and hopefully you guys love it hopefully you guys have learned a bunch so okay let me look through some of these oh lee asked i joined a little bit late um, but I, it's, I think this is recording. Does this mean I can listen to what I missed later? Yes, that was a really easy question. Yes, I'm recording it. I will send it to you guys later. Whew, I literally just do that, did this. Lauren asks, any tips on moving and bringing your brand with you into a new market? Um, I don't know how many of you are aware, but I literally just moved in February from Tampa, Florida to Atlanta, Georgia, and I took my business with me. And before I did that, I realized that there was going to be some difficulty, even though my business is mostly web-based, it didn't really necessarily hurt me, but it did definitely give me kind of a, a scare. You know, it's, it's difficult to move your business. I recently um, did an interview and talked to a photographer that was an army wife and she moves her business every two years. And it's like freaking insane to me. She had the best advice, hands down. She said, before you get to the, your destination, make friends with the vendors in that area and also start to market in that area before you even get there. So if you're thinking about doing a major move across country or even if you're trying to move from you know, your, your place to someplace in your backyard an hour and a half away, any type of major move of your business is going to be it's going to be rough on you. So before you do it, make sure you reach out to people, make sure you collect business cards. If you're maybe in your area and you're attending event, um, make sure you're talking to vendors that are, you know, not competitive with you. Maybe if you're a photographer, talk to caterers, talk to florists, talk to event planners, or talk to even dressmakers or dress shops or anybody in that area that you might be interested or you might have something in common with. And start to not really think about it as a, a networking thing, but think about it as a personal relationship. So go out and genuinely make friends with people that, um, that you know you will have something in common with. And you'll, that'll get you the footwork before you actually move. And hopefully that answered. And I also sympathize. If you move, I sympathize with you. You can, you can totally email me. <laughs> Oh, Jordan. Yay. About to move to Denver. Yeah. Okay. Jordan just commented that she's about to move to Denver. So I totally feel you girl. Um, so I, that's pretty much it for questions. I think, I think I got all of them. Um, does anybody else have any more questions? I think I got them all. Um, oh, here's one. How do I measure if my brand works? That's a great question. Okay. This is actually kind of tough, but, um, it takes time to quantify. So if you are implementing a new brand design, like say, for example, you, you're launching a new brand identity, definitely before you do it, create a launch plan. Because anytime you change your visuals, anytime you change your graphics, there's going to be a dip in interactivity. People might be confused. People be like, what the heck is going on? So before you actually launch any new kind of look or feel to your brand or logo, definitely create a plan before you do it. Um, and creating a plan would include issuing sneak peeks, getting people excited on Facebook, um, emailing your past clients and sending them samples or, or, or just even being like, what do you think? Get initial feedback. Absolutely. Also, secondly, make goals. Make goals that you can measure. Decide what you want to do with your new brand and who you're going to reach and then make a quantifiable goal and set a date. If you haven't reached that goal by that particular date, re-examine why you haven't reached that goal. That's going to help you assess whether or not your brand identity is effective in the market, if it's reaching your target market, and you're actually doing what you're supposed to be doing. If you don't measure or quantify, it's very difficult to figure out if you're successful or not. How would you know if you're successful? So say, for example, you have a new logo and you put it on a postcard and you send it out to a thousand people. And if only like, and maybe the postcard has like an incentive on the back that says, 
get a free lollipop or something and only one person redeems the free lollipop out of a thousand um maybe we have a little bit of an issue we have to re-examine was it the logo was it the avenue the message was delivered in was it the lollipop do people not like lollipops so definitely that that's a great example of how you should set a goal and kind of take a look at quantifying it and see what steps along the way you might have lost somebody Okay, yay. All right, so I am going to give out my three goodies right now if there are no more questions, which I don't think anybody else has any more questions. Oh, I see more talking. Oh, everyone's moving. <laughs> okay, so I have a copy of Photography Business Secrets by Laura White of Photomint. Photomint is seriously amazing. Um, if you haven't checked out Laura at Photomint, I definitely think you should totally do that. So I'm going to pick at random. Actually, I'm going to have my assistant pick at random. Will you pick someone at random that's still live in the chat and we can give them Laura White's Photography Business Secrets for the Savvy Photographer's Guide to Sales, Marketing, and More. Trust me, you want this book. It's really good. Let's see. Who, who do we have? Stacy, Jared has picked Stacy. Okay, Stacy, um, please email me. I will, how do we put, give them my email? And Stacy can, Stacy can totally get this book. Go on, girl, get your book. <laughs> Stacy says, woo! Yes, Photomint is seriously amazing. Okay, Stacy, just in case, my email is elizabeth, E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H, at postfilmdesign.com. And if we're Facebook friends, you could totally harass me there. But yeah, you won that. Woo, girl. All right. And I have two contracts to give away as well. I have a wedding photography contract by Create Pro Legal, and I also have a portrait contract from Create Pro, Pro Legal. Who, do we have any wedding photographers and portrait photographers in here? Or do you guys do both or no? <laughs> Mackenzie, you do portraits. Ashley, Ashley, do you shoot weddings? Who does both? Everyone does both, both, wedding, both, both, both. Okay, assistant, let's give away the wedding contract. Will you pick at random our wedding? Lauren, Lauren, you won the wedding contract. Woo! Awesome. Okay, again, Lauren, you too. Um, email me, elizabeth at postfilmdesign.com or harass me on social media. I will be there for you. <laughs> All right, and portraits, portraits, portrait, portrait giveaway. Yay, portrait. Um, assistant, lovely assistant. Tell me who, who is going to win. Bumby, oh yay, I get to say your name out loud for the first time ever. Bumby, Bumby won the the portrait contract. Woohoo! Okay, Bumby, again. Email me, elizabeth at postfilmdesign.com or harass me on Facebook. I know you want to. <laughs> yay, Bumby! All right, I, I just love saying that name out loud, Bumby. That's great. Hopefully, I'm saying it right. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, is there, uh, hopefully I answer all your questions. I think I got them all, uh, at least a, a large brand majority of them. And we are at four minutes left in our webinar. I'm super excited. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you for making this a success. Woohoo! All right, guys, go out there and kick some butts. I'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful night.